Let's do some acceleration test on the KTM Freeride. This bike is very heavy. It weighs more than pretty much all our motocross bikes. Uh, I think it weighs just right around 250. It's got an 18 kilowatt motor. The Suron and Teleria is 6,000. 6, this is 18,000. So it's three times the power of a Suron. Um, when we crank up the power on our modified Surons, we're running, we have a 15 kilowatt tune, but we hardly ever run it because it's just too much power for such a lightweight bike. Um, we're usually running um, usually close to 8 kilowatts. Um, I run the 12 kilowatt tune quite a lot on my Saron with the 1821s, which is the same size tires that's on this KTM Freeride. When I'm running the 12 kilowatt tune, I'm never running it at the max power level. I'm usually running it kind of two thirds or somewhere around there. And it feels really good on the Suron. More than double the weight, 120 pounds on the Suron versus 250 here. Triple the power. This should have some really impressive uh, acceleration times because when you think about it, um, you've got to add your body weight to the bike. And because the KTM has triple the power and it is a heavier bike, my 190 pound body is not going to impact the acceleration on this bike as much as it did the Suron. KTM has a much higher voltage system. I want to say it's 250 volts or something like that. Supposedly with the higher voltages, you have less battery sag. So what that means is when the battery starts to get low, and we haven't ridden this free ride enough to test this theory out, but as the battery levels get low um, and you try to accelerate um, on the Suron, you guys all know, that uh, the Suron, on a modded Suron, you'll actually it'll actually over, uh, under voltage and cut the power to the motor. On a stock Suron, what happens is it goes into limp mode and you just don't have hardly any power. Now the KTM Freeride will also go into limp mode. When this starts flashing down here, you're in limp mode, which is basically warning you that you better get yourself back to the truck ASAP because you are about out of juice and it, it slows the bike down and everything. Um, and that's that needs to be done on an electric bike because you can damage the electronics if you go too low on the voltages. First of all, we have a key down here, so we have to turn the key on. Okay, so the key's on, but nothing's happened. The cluster has not lit up, nothing happened. Okay, well this is kind of weird. I have an on-off button, so it's turned on. Okay, there we go. So my cluster has lit up. So now, okay, I should be able to ride the bike, right? No, if I give it throttle input, nothing is happening. Okay, so, well, if this was a gas motorcycle, I guess what I would need to do is I'd have to start the engine, but that's kind of weird because this is electric, right? So I don't have to start it. Well, yes, KTM decided to keep it the same way as a gas bike. You have to literally start your engine. Okay, you probably heard that, this beeped. Uh, what you probably cannot hear on the video is I can actually hear the water pump running and the water running through the system to cool the motor. Um, now the bike is on, it's ready to go, and if I twist the throttle, it's moving forward, but I don't want to go anywhere, so let's pull it back here. Um, so, love the rocker switch hate the start switch that's pretty lame it does not belong on an electric bike you know the key's great for security i don't mind that but uh ktm get rid of this everybody else so uh suron telaria anybody else making an electric bike please please put a kill switch on the thumb either side i don't care which side but put it on there level one this only has three levels we're going to pull times off the video Three, two, one, go. So, really smooth off the bottom, picking up speed, acceleration stop, stop. It feels like top speed on level one is definitely governed because um, it stopped accelerating there at one point. All right, 
So to change levels on this, you hold this down and it blinks. There you go. So you hold this down until it switches. Now we're in mode number two, and this should be quite a lot faster. Two, one, go. Oh, that's fast. Wow. And stop. That was fast. Man, I wish I had uh, the Garmin. It's been a while since I've done acceleration runs with uh, the modded Surons. That felt every bit as fast as a modded Suron. That was fast, guys. All right, let's go to three. So now we're in mode three, fastest setting on the KTM. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> That is way faster than a Suron. <laughs> Alright, let's go see what the top speed is on this thing. I'm just looking at the speedometer on the KTM and it's very close to what I'm getting on the GPS. So 14 down here, 15, and four, yeah. So the speeds look like they're very accurate on the KTM. Whereas on the Suron and the Teleria, they're pretty far off. Wow, this is fast. 50. 40. Yeah, we're going 50. I don't know why this is not working, but this says 50, and I believe it. This was not working right. So the KTM Speedo said 50 on that run, and I believe it. It was fast. Forty-nine, fifty. So I'd, the uh, top speed of the free ride seems to be fifty. Let's go down to two or one, I guess. So the top speed seems to be limited to thirty, thirty-two. 33. I don't know. Oh, that's weird. I can feel regen. Oh, because I'm in one. That's right. Yeah, so regen only works in one. It's weird. I have to... It's one thing I hate about the KTM. I have to stop to change modes. I can't do that on the fly. So if you want to put a beginner on this, put it on mode one because there's a top speed limit and the power is super mellow. Uh, power mode two feels really good for, it's not that different than three. In fact, when we've ridden this bike, we've ridden it in power mode two quite often, uh, partially to conserve battery.